This video is going to cover the extensions that I've been using in this beginner series for Ruby on Rails and how to configure some of them. So this is a pretty frequently asked for topic. It's just I never really know how to cover it. I'm just going to go down my extensions list today and I'll sort of tell you if there's any third party gems you need to install to make some of these work. So the first one I would suggest isn't actually an extension anymore. They actually added it into your project preferences. So you can come to File, Preferences, Settings, search for uh, Emmet, and then I think Trigger. And then you're going to want to enable the Trigger Expansion on Tab, which is how I've been doing a lot of the autocomplete when it comes to the HTML in the application. So if we come over here, we'll just create a new file real quick. We'll call this test.html.erb, just inside of a random project right now. And in here, you can see sort of what Emmet does. So if I want to do a div, I can just type div, hit tab, and it creates a div. If I want to do like a h1, I can do the same thing. If I want to create a div that has a class, I can just follow what I would do in CSS. So for example, I might have a class of test, just do dot test. I'll then exit out of all of my autocompletes here, just hit tab, and then it gives me a class of test. If I want to do two classes, I can do dot test one, dot test two, hit tab, that also works. Uh, if you want to do something like, I don't know, a, a couple of LIs, you can do like LI times three, hit tab, and it'll create three of them. And then you can just do like, I don't know, item one, item two, and I'm just hitting tab to navigate between the three of these, and it just automatically does those. So that's sort of how all of these work. If you want like an ID, you just do the hash or the pound symbol, and then, I don't know, test as the ID. Oops, I'm getting some extra code completion there that's in the way. And you can sort of combine all of these as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this real quick. So that's the Emmet tab completion, a very useful one to be aware of. You then come over to the extensions list that I have here and we can scroll through these and try and parse for the Rails specific ones. So a big one that I use is GitHub Copilot. Of course, this one requires you to uh, sign up for the waitlist for the program. And that URL is github.com slash features slash copilot slash sign up. And that's where a lot of the uh, autocomplete suggestions come from. And I'll have a link to this in the video description. Just be warned, it's, it learns based off of public repositories. And there have been instances in the past where it will grab licensed code. It won't include the license. It'll change the license. So if you're using it at your company, then tread very lightly because if you're taking <laughs> improperly licensed code that is uh, a very serious legal issue that you do need to be aware of. Uh, the next one to sort of be aware of is GitLens. So this one's not really Rails specific. This is just one that I use a lot. I mean, neither is GitHub Copilot, but uh, GitLens lets you see your commit history. So what I've done here is I've opened up the blog application we've been working on uh, to sort of show you how GitLens works. So essentially what it'll do is right here, I can click on the green bars or on the blue bars and I can see what was added or what was changed. And there will also be instances where you go through one of your, I don't know, your controllers maybe, let's say the comments controller and you can see who edited what and when. So this right here, I can see I made this commit three months ago. And this is really helpful if you're working on a project with other people and you sort of want to see who broke what. Not that I would ever do that. Um, but if you go through and you see, oh, you know, someone changed this from params ID to params test and it doesn't work anymore. Well, now you'll see that this commit, assuming I push this up, was done one second ago. And that's where the change might have uh, uh, broken the build. So this one's pretty useful. There's other options where you can sort of open changes with previous revisions and do a compare to what changed, et cetera, with some buttons up here in the corner. And this is something that I actually use when I uh, like work professionally with like teams and stuff, especially as a team lead, very helpful to have GitLens. Come back over to the extensions list and we'll keep going down here. 
but we do have prettier. Uh, prettier is useful for CSS and HTML and some JavaScript. So this is one that might sometimes affect how my code works. It'll just do some auto formatting for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then add prettier and you'll probably want to add in a Ruby specific one. For here we have the Ruby extension. So this one I just use as a, I think it's for the RuboCop formatting and the prettier uh, functionality. I would suggest adding it and just seeing what, what it does. We then have the Ruby extension pack, which might be adding some of these other extensions. I would suggest adding this just because it adds stuff like the linter, the simple ERB, and the Ruby symbols and stuff. So definitely add the extension pack. And I do know for a couple of these, they rely on solar graph and solar graph is actually something that allows for some of the context aware, uh, autocomplete. So what you want to do is run your gem install solar graph and just install it on your system. So right here is the command I use to install RuboCop as a global gem. You probably just want to change this to solar graph. So it's going to be RVM at global do gem install solar graph. If we run that, it should just go through and install it and we can keep going while that runs. Uh, the next one is the Ruby test explorer. I, I think I got this working at some point, but I'm actually not entirely sure, uh, but they do have an example of what the GUI will look like. I'll probably cover this in the future testing tutorial for the series. For now, it's just something to maybe keep your eye on, see if you can get it working, but I'll try and get it working properly and cover it in like its own separate video. And then I have RuboCop, which is everyone's worst nightmare and everyone's best friend simultaneously because of how much configuration you have to go through to make this thing work and it's never actually happy with what you're doing. Basically, this allows you to set some styles that you are forced to follow. So if you're working in a code base and you want people to follow the conventions, this allows you to do that. There's also some auto formatting you can do with it. Um, it's kind of hit and miss if people like it or not. But again, if you do need RuboCop, I would suggest doing your global install. Uh, that way you don't have to install this on every single new repo because you'll probably forget when you make a new project. We then have the Ruby symbols, which I think got added by the Ruby extension pack. I'm not entirely sure what this does, but it looks like let's use do some searching for modules, classes, and methods, but there's a typo right there. We then have the simple ERB, which gives you Ruby and ERB syntax highlighting. Continuing down here, I think the next one is probably the tab nine. So in addition to GitHub Copilot, I do use tab nine. This is a free tool. There is a paid version, but I just use the free version. But this does give you some of the context aware autocompletes while you're, you're coding along. It does work in multiple languages too. So if you're like trying to do something like at comment dot destroy, you can see here the destroy is being suggested by tab nine or dot delete, uh, or I don't know, I can do something like comment dot find. You can see here the tab nine is trying to suggest the params for the ID. And some of this comes from Copilot. Some of it comes from tab nine. Sometimes they fight each other, uh, but I kind of just like to use both because tab nine usually has the basic snippets that I need. And then GitHub Copilot has the more advanced snippets. So it's sort of hit and miss too, though, when you're trying to do like the Emmet stuff from earlier, where one just keeps getting in the way and you have to keep hitting escape to get them to stop trying to auto complete because you're trying to do something else but tab nine, I do recommend. And finally, we have a uh, YAML extension. I think this is just for YAML uh, support in VS Code. Of course, if you're working in Rails, you're probably using some YAML files. So this is a fun one to have. There's really not much else to say here. You can sort of see the demo right here where it just covers some, some YAML formatting and stuff. Uh, good ones to have if you like working with Vue uh, are just like Vitor because it, it's a small little uh, tool set for Vue. We also have the all-in-one Vue extension. This comes with the code syntax, highlighting snippets, template generator, code form formatters, and other stuff. So this is a good one to have if you're using Vue. And I think all of this comes with the Vue extension pack. So you can see here, this is this comes with uh, Vitor, Vue, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript snippets, the search and translate for Google Translate, whatever that means, ESLint, GitLens, Code Spell Checker, NPM, IntelliSense, and IntelliCode. So if you're using Vue with Rails, I would suggest having this, but even if you're just using Vue, I'd suggest having this. And if you're using React, 
I would suggest instead having, let me see if I have it installed somewhere, the ES7 plus React Redux React Native Snippets. So this is the one that lets you do stuff like RFCE to do like a tab expansion for a React component. So if I create like a new file here, let's call this test.jsx. I come in here and I type RFCE. You can see the React functional uh, export component right here is being suggested. If I tab on this, it just creates an entire React component based on the file name uh, that you can then like scaffold out from there. So it's just a quick way to generate some snippets. So it's very helpful. And of course, there's other like uh, settings that you can configure with this. But this is a good one if you like to use React. Another couple of good ones for Rails are the Ruby Haml gem. If you like to use Haml, personally, I don't care for it. You have the Ruby language colorization gem and the uh, Ruby on Rails gem. Uh, the other one that's really good for me personally that I like is the VS Code icons gem or the uh, icons extension, because if you look at the Explorer, all these fancy little icons, these are all coming from this VS Code icons extension. So that's why my little uh, like sidebar here always looks so colorful because it's coming from this extension. I'll probably do a proper one of these where it's a bit more organized in the future, but I've had so many questions about this recently because I've added so many new gems to do some of the uh, formatting. I would just say make sure you have RuboCop installed, make sure you have SolarGraph installed as global gems so that you can use these in multiple projects or install them in each project. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, I'll see you in next week's video.